<laughs> it's the 8 bit version. I like it. Oh, yeah. Like that now, Calvin. Yes. yes. Was that was that specifically like the octopusy theme in there? Because I I can't tell these Bond music themes apart. Well, I thought I heard Skyfall at the start actually, and then it was a little Bond theme. I, I didn't thought really I heard Skyfall. Get... Yeah, I didn't get much octopusy in it. Uh, yeah, that that uh, remix of the theme for for today's episode. Today's episode is Octopussy, by the way. I love James it. Bond. That was Tom O'Fallow's doing. He's He's been sending us in one of these for every Bond episode we've done, pretty much, since he started doing it. So thanks once again, Tomo. There was a bit in there that remi- reminded me of the uh, the Aladdin video game. Hmm. When you're in the dungeon. That, yeah. That's a compliment, because I like good, that music. Good reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone remembers playing that Aladdin video game. You probably do, people who listen to this. I I do actually remember playing that game. Uh, I was was trying to act cool and act like I didn't know what you were talking about. Do you remember, Calvin, Sir Hiss appeared as one of the snakes in the desert? Oh, you jump on the head of. Yeah, Yeah. it was good, though. Yeah, Yeah, very good. (laughs) Right, James Bond, though. Yeah. Oh, God. We're back. How many of these have we done now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Who are you? I'm Calvin. The YouTube Bond expert, Calvin Dyson. Oh yes, that's me. Yeah, yeah. I'm Sol, and I oh, yeah. I don't like James Bond nearly as much. <laughs> I'm I'm Alan, ditto. And you're somewhere in the middle. I think is fair no. to say. I think no, I'm no, more in the middle than say. Alan is. <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably fair to say that. I always think of Alan as being the middle ground, but I guess he probably isn't, is he? I think if we were to compare our ratings on the Bond films so far, I reckon I'd be a lot higher on average than yeah, Alan. I agree. Shall I work it out whilst we're talking? I'll come back to you later no. in the episode. No. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do is, it now. This is... Um, I'm glad you brought this up, because I did have a question for Calvin, and this is gonna sound facetious, but it's a genuine <sighs> question, okay? What What do you like about these films, for fuck's sake? What, <laughs> what is it about these films? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. We're 15 films in now, right? We're 13 films in. <laughs> Is it? Okay. So, yes. And there's been one good one, and a couple, maybe three, that have been like, eh, watchable. And, uh, and the rest are just crap. What do you think's the good one? Goldfinger. Goldfinger, yeah. Goldfinger. Uh, okay. I, I would largely echo Alan's sentiments, but <laughs> this, ep- this, this episode, this film, I think I was starting to see some glimpses of what Calvin gets out of this. I knew it! I knew this would be the one to turn you. <laughs> I, I, Let's I, not I go crazy. This, listeners, after we recorded the last Bond one, I was like, I can't wait for Octopussy, so I bet that one's going to be the one that you really like. And I knew it. Monkey suits and clowns <laughs> and like a circus and creepy chasing through woods. This has always been one of my... one of one of the less bad ones. <laughs> out of the ones I'd seen. Which, this is the last one I've seen before. Next next time we do Bond, I'm going to be completely in virgin territory for me. I won't have seen them, but this is the last one I'd Ooh. seen before. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I can see. If, you, if you're just into silly Roger Moore nonsense, there's a bit more of that in this. Like It feels mm. like it's got a, a better sense of what it's trying to do than a lot of them. I think it balances the campiness and the silliness with some of the more thrillery spy stuff quite well. And I think we all agreed that Fiore's only was a little bit too trying to be hard and um, cold yeah. and it just didn't really work. Whereas this one, I think they get the balance just about right. Yeah. Well, mm. yeah. <laughs> they could have maybe put more effort into a plot. Um, <laughs> That's James Bond, isn't it? Just- Yet again, in this film, with a Bond film, I found myself making a note halfway through going, I have no idea what's going on. I've, I've... <laughs> and it's not complicated. It's just, I, it does not grip my attention whatsoever. These films just, they cannot hold me. I think there is a pattern with these, uh, certainly the Roger Moore films, where the first hour of the film is about something less, sort like Bond is often following up something 
all you know, all a little bit innocuous, like oh, a boat has gone missing, or oh, there's Fabergé eggs, um, and all this kind of stuff. And then about the halfway point, it's like oh no, wait a minute, there's something far more foul going on here. Can I can I say the the pattern for me with these films is that I I usually quite enjoy the first half hour. And then it just gets to a point where I'm like, oh, will you fucking get on with it? Jesus Christ. (laughs) And then I just start to turn on the film and get sick of it and come out hating it. And that's pretty much what happened with this one. (laughs) Okay, well, should should we talk about the opening then? Because this is one of the more famous openings. And it's a classic sort of has nothing to do with the rest of the film thing where Roger Moore is in Cuba. I think it's Cuba. And uh, he has the little action sequence in the little jet comes out of the horse's bum. You know, oh yeah, I was going to say, I, oh, I watched yeah, this yeah. film maybe two days ago in preparation for this, and I couldn't even remember what the opening was. But yeah, now you've, <laughs> oh, now, come on. Now you've said horse's bum, it's jogged my memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember the bit where it, it flies through the d- closing door, a very narrow space, the plane, it goes sideways. Yes. That looked like a legitimate stunt that someone had done, so it was quite impressive. Yeah. Funnily yeah. enough, I, I, I um, asked a question to the special effects guy who worked on a lot of these films. He's worked on, like, Star Wars and stuff, John Richardson. And I asked him, like, you know, what is the, the, the one shot that you're, like, the most proud of? Um, he said the horse's like, ass. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was expecting him to say, like, oh, Star Wars or, like, some kind of space, like, you know, something really fantastical. But he said that, yeah, the jet going through... The thing was the thing he was most proud of because it was uh, so many different practical effects, yeah. like you know, foreground miniatures and then oh, yeah. real size things in the background. And was this at a James Bond convention? It was at a screening uh, for the thirty-fifth anniversary of Moonraker. Right, so he knew his audience. So he knew to play he, to the so Bond crowd. Yeah, he, th- okay. he thought, "I'm not going to, I'm not going to give a real answer. I'm going to pretend it's James <laughs> oh, <what>? Bond." <laughs> but I, I thought he was going to say Moonraker because that's one with all the space stuff. And he, said he probably couldn't remember it. Probably like me and Alan, and he was like, well, "Which one?" Oh, yeah. That, that. See, presumably, he's about ninety years old now. I mean. <laughs> nah, he's got a soft spot for those Bond film sets because uh, Cubby Broccoli, you know, kept the uh, yeah. kept the cocaine flowing, ding kept dong. the women. <laughs> ding dong, <laughs> ding dong. <laughs> hey, yo, Cubby, hello. Oh, <sighs> it's good that Cubby at least sort of sticks to the Bond episodes. <laughs> Mm. For the most oh, part. Oh! All right. He hasn't got anything to say. Yeah, today. he's out of material. <laughs> he's rehashing all ground. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, you guys didn't like the opening then. This is one of my favorite Bond um, pre titles. I yeah, didn't it was a dynamic like opening it. Sequence, it was fine. Nothing to do with the film. I've seen better openings in Bond films, I've seen worse ones. It was just kind of there. I, I did wonder if this is the film specifically where the judo chop thing comes from. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> There's a lot of judo chops in this uh, in this film. Yeah. yeah, but I did like right at the end when Octopussy, the woman, she she judo chops the big turban guy, and he just sort of turns around and goes, what, and then backhand slaps her. <laughs> like, get off me, you prick! <laughs> so the judo chop is is. It's all in the power of the wielder. Um, you can't just <laughs> chop and hope it works. It's, you, know, you have to train that shit. Spock used yeah. to do it all the time in Star Trek. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. Do we want to talk about the song at all, actually? Uh, well, I made a note of, I've never heard this song before. It's the most <laughs> right. it was un- very well, bland, Bond it? song I've Jesus. ever heard. It's not even got octopusy in the, in the words. You probably have heard it, because I'm assuming you've seen the um, Seth MacFarlane film Ted. Oh yeah, uh, I will have yes, yeah. Yes, he uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg's character sings it to his girlfriend on stage, and it's like their song apparently. And I guess Seth MacFarlane picked it as a joke. That's because classic. It's funny that classic it's Seth MacFarlane this... humor, yeah. But then we're two of a kind. We move as one. Oh, come on, give him a chance. I I like it. I don't know if the singer is giving it her best, but... Uh, can you sing it for us, Calvin? I can't remember. I gen- yeah, I can't remember the tune. We're an all-time high. <laughs> <laughs> we'll 
change all that's gone before. <laughs> it's a bit yawny. It sounds like she's yawning a lot as she sings. That was that was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in so strong and so deep And so are you In my time I've said these words before But now I realize My heart was telling me lies For you they're true We're an all-time high We'll change all that's gone before Do it so much Where have all the children God. <laughs> How does it go? <laughs> We're an all time high. <laughs> oh dear. I mean, is that, is that good, is it? Can I ask a question about Fabergé eggs? Well, I wanted to get into yes. this. Because I've only ever heard of them in films basically as a reference of something very expensive where they go, oh, not exactly a Fabergé egg, is it? Really? I know, I, I, I just like couldn't that. stop <laughs> thinking about that episode of The Simpsons where Bleeding Comes Murphy spends all his money on Fabergé eggs and then the guy's like, <laughs> I think you've had enough, sir. I'll tell you when I've had enough. And then I started thinking, I bet this is exactly the sort of thing Calvin would spend his money on. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I don't know what they actually are. They are just purely decorative things, but particularly famous. Yeah, it was a, a it was a it was a Russian jeweler. Was he Russian? It was a specific jeweler. Yes, who... Karl yeah. Fabergé. Yes, and he made them for um, the czars and the the royal family in Russia. And they were like Easter gifts. I think there's only about fifty in existence, limited uh... to uh, fifty copies. <laughs> 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 but I, I think they're all very different. It's it's like Damien Hurst makes those skulls covered in diamonds, and there's only like <laughs> gives them to the queen. yeah, and, he, and you get every now every every time he needs some money, he'll just make another one. So there's only about twenty five of them so far, but he just bashes them out, takes them to auction. Each one sells for like several million. Same thing. Uh, we, yeah, yeah, kind of. Um, so yeah, I think there are there, some of them are like over a hundred years old at this point. Um, I guess so early nineteen hundreds, but they are very valuable. So what was was Karl Fabergé alive during the Russian Revolution, and what happened Ooh. to him? <laughs> <That's> what <I> was... <laughs> you, know, you know what? I'm going to have a good. look at that because uh, he does seem like someone who would have been. Oh no! Died 1920. Ooh, mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe it didn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he lived to he be 74. Old. Yeah, let's see if he died horrifically. Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he fled, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, went to live in Switzerland. Never recovered from the shock of the revolution, and died September nineteen twenty. Died of his shock. Family believed two years later. <laughs> his, his family believed he died of a broken heart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Was it broken <laughs> by a <laughs> pistol? <laughs> yeah, ice picked to the head. <laughs> Anyway, yes, Fabergé eggs are very valuable. And there's one at the centre of the plot to this film. Well, I, I don't know what it was. It was stolen, then it was a fake, and then they were using it to... There was a real one and a fake, Alan. How hard is that? Yeah, but what, what, what purpose did either of them serve? I don't know what they actually were there for. The Fabergé eggs? Yeah. James Bond put a Well, they're instigators. They... In... No, it's exactly what I said earlier. It's just the instigator. It's like the uh, shuttle going missing in Moonraker, or um, yeah, the boat submarine going missing in uh, The Spy Who Loved Me. It's just something that isn't so high stakes that Bond needs to investigate, uh, and then will lead on to the high stakes plot, which of course involves nuclear bombs. I mean, we we can just sort of go along with the uh, the film, regardless of if we're not. I mean, I'm I'm still can never quite remember which uh, whether at one point uh, Stephen Burkoff's character like smashes one of the eggs, and they think it's a fake, but I think it might be a real one because of all mm. the back and forth. Hey, Maybe yo! That's what the villain? Is. There was a real egg, no expenses spared on a James Bond. <laughs> I was like, yeah, get a real fucking Fabergé egg, we'll fucking smash that thing to smithereens on camera, it's gonna be fucking exquisite. 
<laughs> All right. Yeah, fair enough. Tell me when we get to the uh, the Fabergé being auctioned, the auction scene. All right, well, no, we can talk about that scene, because that's also a scene that introduces us to the main villain, Louis Jordan as Kamal Khan. Which one's he? The, the main villain. Which one's that? The the one with the Indian guy henchman. I don't even remember. I can't remember anything about it. <sighs> the main it. bad guy is sort of Frenchy, but he's got a posh accent. Oh, yeah, he's like, aha, uh-huh, Fabergé egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's him. <laughs> But yeah, so we then we have a, an auction scene of Fabergé eggs, an auction where they allow the very expensive item being sold. They just let people wander up and touch it. They just bring it over to you so you can have a little prod uh, and touch it, um, uh, slip it under your newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that that move he does where he like lowers the real one into the newspaper and then brings out the fake one. I don't I don't think you could really do that in real life. Not like how he does it. I quite liked the auction scene overall. I thought oh. it was more, more interesting than what we normally get in a Bond movie. I, 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 yeah, I think Roger Moore's very good here. I like that yeah. he's got his uh, MI6 mate on the side who's like making faces and, and yeah. all that. Uh, yeah, I quite liked it. I, I thought this is this is James Bond doing his kind of like we'd often get him in a casino or or he's kind of got his action mode and his seducing women mode. He's got like, look at me, I'm a rich cunt mode, and and where he sort of pretends that he's rich, but he's actually just playing with government money. And uh, <laughs> I think it's it's quite nice when they find a new spin on these things. And I haven't seen him at an auction yet, hmm. so it's quite nice. There yeah. was, you know, oh, is he gonna is he gonna outbid this guy? What's he doing bidding that much on this egg? And and Q's <laughs> there, like, I can't believe it! What are you doing, Bond? What are you doing? Stop That's it. not Q, it wasn't but Q. Okay. Who is it? <laughs> the old guy. Uh, it's F. a guy who we never see again. His name is Jim Fanning. Jim uh, Fanning. And he, Jim! He's an antiques expert uh, who is here for some reason. Is Q in this one? Yeah! He has a workshop in uh, India later on. With woman with tits in it. Yeah! You, you must remember that bit. Roger Moore gets on the uh, the camera watch thing and just starts zooming in on a woman's boobs. Oh, I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. That was so... I was watching it thinking, like, fucking hell. Like, is is he about... Like, how infantile? And then Q, Q's like, really, Bond? How infantile? And I was like, uh, <laughs> at least they know. <laughs> mm, uh, uh, the main setting of this one is India. Uh, and I love that. I think it's a really great... It's got lots of uh, Indiana Jones, uh, Temple of Doom vibes, even though this film predated that. The worst Indiana Jones film. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, I like it here. Uh, I, I like that he has his uh, friend, VJ, who are either of you guys uh, tennis fans? I liked VJ. I wish they'd done more with him. He seemed yeah, like I, a fun little character. Yeah, I agree. Well, he's VJ Armitage, I think. He he was a famous tennis player, like in the eighties, and not an actor. And huh. That's important to him. Oh, highlight. really? But that's he was just friends with Cubby Broccoli. And, hey, uh, yo! That... <laughs> <laughs> Gotta look out for those at and... home first. You know what I'm saying? Keep your friends I close. Keep like... your enemies further away. I... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I. I... <laughs> uh... Yeah, I mean, oh, that explains why they have the tennis bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was yeah, a bit the odd. scene where he has, where he gets a big bat and he's like knocking bombs off the boat at the end. <laughs> the bag <baggage laughs> shooting bombs at him, and he's like, "No!" And he's like, what? <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, I remember that scene." Um, um, but yeah, there's just I, when they were introducing the character, and he and, he, and he's just like, "Oh, by the way, I played tennis, uh, <laughs> professional, semi-professional <laughs> tennis player." <laughs> like what? And then he like smashes a tennis racket over someone's head. I yeah. did think that was a weird thing, but oh! he's, I'm used to it in Bond. There's that car chase where he's whacking everyone with tennis rackets. Yeah. So I made a note about yeah. that. I found it really funny. There was a guy hitting the bad guys with a tennis racket. Was that him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's him. Yeah, that, that's why, I guess. Because uh, it's weird that they even called the character VJ. So it's weird, a very yeah. odd. That's yeah. the equivalent of if in the new James Bond. Shaquille O'Neal plays like a guy that James Bond has to team up with, and then there's a car chase, and he's just like throwing basketballs through hoops. All he keeps throwing stuff. Through hoops. <laughs> he does it over his the back of his head, not even looking. <laughs> 
Uh, I love all that stuff in the chase, though, where like Roger Moore hops out of the taxi at one point and then he's going across like a guy is like on a bed of nails and there's fire breathers and sword <laughs> swallowers and all that kind of stuff it's just like what india's like it, i guess it, it made me want to watch aladdin again and <laughs> i know i know it's not the same country <laughs> but it's the same so to hollywood it might as well be <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit here and pretend that that's like good sort of <laughs> narrative work but it is in keeping with the sort of silliness of but that, that it does work i i yeah I, I found it far more entertaining mm. than i typically find these films when when they see q as well and he's there's like the rope coming out of the thing and then the, <laughs> the guy's climbing oh yeah the rope and, then it, and then it breaks and flops over and then james bond can't help himself but do an erection gag this is this was it was this time this whole bit there's like about 10 minute sequence here where every single line bond said was a fucking pun you know when like they dropped him on a bed of nails is like what a prick uh or whatever whatever he says <laughs> something like that having problems keeping it up q smashing q come along wonderful for boys and pen letters very handy uh, oh, fucking mm. puns, Jesus Christ! Oh, I love it. I think Roger Moore's on really good form in this one. Actually, it does seem like he's uh... the most equipped to his sensibilities out of all the films I've seen so far. And he wasn't even going to do it because they were. Uh, he was like had a fine, uh, like a four film contract with an option for a fifth, and he did that. And then they were testing like James Brolin was one of the actors. I can't remember if it was this one or one later on, but Sam Neill was another. But then, of course, there was the Sean Connery rival film coming out at the same time, so could be decided that a known quantity would be better. That's a good point. And Never Say Never Again was being made at the same time. Yes. Which was the unofficial, we've... Sean Connery needs to pay his tax bill. (gasps) (laughs) James (laughs) Bond! (laughs) Oh, ding dong, it's Billy Connolly! (laughs) (laughs) I've got... I've got taxes to pay, lads! A man can never say it never again. Hey! It's really, it, sound, it doesn't sound anything like Japanese Bond, which is odd. No, well, no. Japanese Bond, being Japanese, is a young man's game. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. It's it's old Sean Connery. He age a lot yeah. better than us, don't they, lads? Oh, can't say that these days. <laughs> Sha Billy the Vet. <laughs> That's, that's my favourite film. <laughs> Wait a minute. This this is a mask. Look, oh my god, it's Japanese Bond. Ah, as you all along. I knew I could. <laughs> Trick you, lads. <laughs> Damn it. I knew that face was unconvincing. Yeah, we, we wouldn't have let him in if, if uh, he hadn't done that. <laughs> well, well, I'm here, lads. Might as well rattle off some of these new potatoons. <laughs> right, what we've got this time, lads. Remember that Peter McCormick lad from last time? Not last time, but a while back. Oh, I remember all our patrons. Like, oh yeah, but they well, were my close family. You should you should think of him as double close family, because for some unknown reason unto us, he went and upped his uh, donation for some reason. So thank you very much, Peter. I'll, I'll give you another shout out for that. Thank you, lad. I think I can. I think I can guess the reason. I think the reason is probably the quality content that oh, yeah. he's receiving. For well, his, yeah, his we have, we have just been shitting out the minisodes left, right, and centre. Yeah, we put what we put four out last. But week? when I say shitting looks... out, I mean it's like it's <laughs> like the way. golden goose. You know, it, don't take that <laughs> as a, a hit. Like it's not like we're not taking care with him. I've, I was up till three in the morning editing Aladdin. <laughs> putting the little... He only started at half past two, but <laughs> 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 putting the little putting the little Will Smith clips in there. <laughs> 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 yeah, that in there. Uh, yeah. What we've we, we just done our reviews recently of films we've been talking about. So Aladdin, uh, Men in Black. We've got some more that we just haven't had time to edit yet, including Toy Story Four, which we went to see on the opening day. Um, Dark Phoenix that's not exactly a hotly anticipated one but we're going to put it out anyway I'm sure it is, I'm sure people want to hear us slagging it off we did Rocket Man even though we hadn't done anything about that have you seen Dark time. Phoenix yet Calvin? no I haven't, I've seen Rocket Man what, what do you think of Rocket Man? Uh, I thought it was very nice yeah, yeah, good 
Yeah, all right. <laughs> I just don't think you should ever make a biopic of someone who's still alive. I know, I, I think all mm. things considered, and especially considering that he's an executive producer on it, it was pretty good. I liked it. There you go, that's a, that's a preview for a um, mini-sode. <laughs> anyway, Elijah, I better rattle off some more of these. These lads will be getting restless waiting for their names to come out. So we got Daniel Phillips. Thank you very much, Phillips. He's just, uh, he's just handy, that Daniel Phillips. As a screwdriver, that's what they say. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's wrong with that? Is this Roger Moore has been writing your material? <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with that? It's James Bond. That's part, part and partial. Right, this one, you like, you might remember this one, lads. Uh, it's only Paul Breer. Oh, yes, we've Paul Breer, friend of the show, Paul Breer, he's been on the show. Yeah, the Le, the, the Le Paul Breer tar pitch, that's what I call him. <laughs> Remember that James Bond film where they go to the Le Breer tar pitch and have a, a gondola chase through it or something? That, has that <laughs> happened yet? No. <laughs> anyway, thank you, lads, thank you to you've Breer also got uh, helping with that. L- Lewis, Lewis Bird. Lewis Bird? Lewis Bird, <laughs> Louis Bird. Louis Bird. Louis Bird. Louis Bird. That sounds like a mobster nickname. Hey, oh, <laughs> Louis Bird. Well, lads, I don't. Uh, I didn't know he was here, lads. We are. Uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, yo. No, lads, I don't. I, I'm gonna go, lads. I don't want to. Hey, why did you make Never Say Never again, you prick? <laughs> right, I'm. I'm out, lads. <laughs> Can't be doing with this shite again. Done this twice now. Oh no. It's yep. Falling out with cubby broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Well, thanks, thanks very much, Japanese Bond. Always a pleasure. <laughs> okay, right. so shall we move back, right. back on to Octopussy? <laughs> yes, we haven't talked about Stephen Burkoff yet, but he's another oh, yeah. villain. In is this. he a tennis player? No, 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 God, you 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 must have seen Stephen Burkoff before in things. But so, so Stephen Stephen Burkoff has appeared on this show, very show before in one of our previous episodes. Has he? Yes, uh, he's one of the villains in Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, oh incredibly! I, I believe in. I believe we complained about how generic and uninteresting he was then as well. <laughs> what? No, no, he, that's not him. He's he's got a he's got a cool like uh, sinister nature to him. Whatever he does, that's why he always plays the villains. I like his line deliveries in this film because he'll just shout out a word at random in the middle of a sentence. So much of the time. <laughs> Uh, General Gogol is presumptuous. He speaks for himself and others who cling to timid, outdated, and unrealistic policies. We have a little scene with Miss Moneypenny. Oh, right. Yes, Obviously, we can't just have Miss Moneypenny because she's a little old lady now. <laughs> didn't didn't last, <laughs> last time you were saying she was looking a bit long in the tooth. She's looking too, too old to be uh, the glamorous secretary character. Yeah, she's been doing it for like twenty-one years at this point. I, I like it because you know she's appropriate for Roger Moore's age. <laughs> so in that yes. sense, I haven't got a problem with it. But I, I don't think that's what they're going for, is it? Well, you know, no. they, they they kind of lean into it. Well, I, I think they they introduce uh, an assistant for her, uh, Miss Penelope Smallbone, and <laughs> yeah. This- <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I forgot that name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was intended as a not replacement for her, but I I don't know if at this point she'd just been in so many that no one wanted to sort of show her the door, so they just kind of kept on going with her, but they obviously felt like they needed some young sexy thing for Roger Moore to flirt with. Um even though Lois Maxwell is a far more age appropriate person for him to be flirting with. I kind of like it though because it seems to acknowledge it in character. Like he's he's flirting with the younger girl in front of Miss Moneypenny as a way to flirt with her. He's like doing it as a kind of mm. jokey or oh, I'll make you jealous kind of thing. It's it feels like it's all part of the game. I actually quite like yeah. that compared to when he's actually leching on people. It's it's a, it works. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it does. Mm. It works better than it, it always feels mean. like Moneypenny's in on the gag. I think that's why why it works. Yes. Mm. and yeah. ultimately. She wouldn't give him the time of day. Like if he, <laughs> when he comes crawling back after they've all left him, she'd be like, "Well, mm. no, I'm, I'm, I'm but Penelope married. Smallbone doesn't grandchild. have a clue what's going on. She's just, just there being oh, there. fucking Smallbone. She's no idea." Penelope, like even in, even though the film's called Octopussy, 
Penelope Smallbone was still like enough to make me sit up and go, "What? <laughs> <laughs> really?" Uh... <laughs> anyway, she never comes back. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> One of these characters is called Mufti. <laughs> <laughs> That's a title. It's not a name. <laughs> Uh, and there's also someone called Thug with Yo-Yo. <laughs> oh, can we talk about the Thug with the Yo-Yo? <laughs> <laughs> We're jumping a bit here, but... You know that fucking circular saw Yo-Yo thing? <laughs> Doesn't seem like the most sort of like convenient weapon <laughs> in most situations. <laughs> he always has to like move... He has to go up to the second floor to, to be able to use it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was very like... Here. The, the kind of weapon you only normally see in a side-scrolling <laughs> video game platform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know the scene where we meet the uh, the bad guy? I think we've already met him, but um, where yes. James Bond has a sit-down with him and they're playing dice. Oh, yes. Playing and they play, guy. yeah. Why did that guy smash up his mate's lucky dice? <laughs> because Well, because he'd been rumbled. He couldn't possibly use them again. He's been discredited. Because so obviously caught cheating, they, the casino would probably go, right, can we have a look at those dice, please? You obviously cheated. <laughs> As if it wasn't obvious enough, like, he keeps throwing a double six whenever he needs it, and then, like, shoves his hand <laughs> under the table, not very subtly at all. <laughs> and it also shows off the strength of his henchmen. He's got a very good grip. Um, yes. Yes. But this this bad guy, he's he's blatantly cheating at backgammon. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's Bond not calls him out subtle. on it, and then he pretty much flat out says in front of everyone, "I'm going to kill you, <laughs> 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 and I'm stealing your egg." By the way, <laughs> uh, not su- not a subtle villain. Um, no. And then pretty much as Bond walks out of the casino, his his henchman sh- tries to shoot him. Uh, pretty much. Yep. I mean, does he think he's not going to get caught? I guess maybe the Indian police force isn't particularly, uh, or uh, are particularly easily bought, I suspect. Mm. Well, did you not enjoy all the stuff with Roger Moore in the jungle, like with all the animals? I did. I, I love the bit where some kids are there like, yeah, we'll give you a lift, and he runs over to the car and then they drive off. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, that, much that, that's later way on. later on. Oh, that's, no. like, well, that's what he's in his <laughs> well, I love that bit. <laughs> Alright, well I like that bit. We'll come back to that. I want to talk about I love I love that with the kids prank him. I wish I just I wish they'd slowed down a couple more times <laughs> and let him catch up. <laughs> uh, no, I'm talking about the the stuff in the jungle when he's escaping and he's uh, All yeah, I can he remember into... is he run he runs into a giant cobweb and then there's a spider on his nose and he goes, Ah <laughs> spider <laughs> No, he gets like leeches. There's a crocodile coming after him. There's tigers, snakes. <laughs> tigers? I don't remember the tigers. How can you not remember the tiger? He tells it to sit. What? I don't remember this. What? Are you sure? There is definitely sure a tiger this? in this film. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. I think I'd remember a tiger being made to sit. I think that would be my favourite part of the film. <laughs> oh my god, it's in there. I can't... Uh, uh, get your DVDs up right now <laughs> and go to that bit. <laughs> And then there's a snake, and he tells it to hiss off. Oh, I don't remember this. I, was, this I, I do like remember that because I just cringed at it. And then he he goes he goes swinging through on vines, and he does a Tarzan yell. Oh, he does! Oh. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. The fact that Bond apparently makes that exact stock recording noise of Tarzan <laughs> from the twenties. Well, you say you saw Bond swinging through. I saw a young man swinging through some vines, land behind a bush, and then Roger Moore came out from behind the bush. <laughs> That's what I saw. Well, yeah. Uh, I like that he gets out of the situation by running over to a tour boat that's going past, and they're like, are you with our group? And he says, no, ma'am, I'm with the economy tour. And I, I didn't like, like it. Do you know why? Oh, why? Because where the fuck was J.W. Pepper? <laughs> Gosh, in tarnation, you again. <laughs> yeah, no, I love all that stuff. I love all the stuff in India. It's great. It does at least give it a bit of different flavor. They haven't done the elephant chase before and, and all that. I suppose. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? So around this point, we're introduced to Octopussy, who I think is. I mean, did you recognize her? Because she's been in a previous Bond film. You probably don't, but I thought I'd ask anyway. Has she? I didn't recognise yeah, yeah. her, but I looked it up, yeah. She's in Man with a Golden Gun, right? Yes, yes, as Christopher Lee's uh, kept woman. Mm. 
Why? What's yeah. that about? Using the same accent. Uh, just friends with Kirby Broccoli <laughs> gets you uh, asked back. Uh, yeah, and I, I like her. She she look, She's obviously younger than Roger Moore, but she's, again, a more age-appropriate woman. Well, I, I looked think. it up to see how old she was, because she looks like a 50-year-old who's had a bit of work done. Uh, but according to her Wikipedia, she was about 38 when this was made. Which, yeah, oh, is more age-appropriate, especially as she looks 10 years older than that. <laughs> I think yeah. I think she may be telling a few little fibs about her birthday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, at least she, she looks a bit more age-appropriate. Every we, we haven't mentioned that every time anyone says octopusy, Roger Moore kind of looks to camera and goes, Ooh. <laughs> like he, oh, he, he has to acknowledge that it's a stupid name. <laughs> like he like yeah. rolls his eyes. Like <laughs> even did not? they didn't even dare try and play it off straight in a Bond film. <laughs> well, this is, can I? I've got a, I've got a little quiz actually, Calvin. This might just we'll just sort Ooh. of drop it in the middle here. Be a nice place. So we've got a bit of a pause because you know you know Calvin how I I like to sort of throw. Uh, a really tough Bond quiz at you to really test your your knowledge of all things Bond. Yes. And you always sort of yes, rise sir. to the occasion. Well, mm-hmm. I thought I'd try to do something different. You know, you try and quiz you on something that you're not an expert in. Uh, and obviously, with this being octopusy, I've I've got I've got eight questions about vaginas uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> to test your knowledge. Right. I know you're familiar. Oh, magnificent. Maybe. This is going to be <laughs> okay. the highlight of the podcast. <laughs> well, I hope so. I'll try and make it funny if we can. Uh, so, so feel free to uh, help him out if you, if you know with any answers. All right. Well, I'll, I'll wait and see if you can get it first, Calvin. Okay. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, where can I start? Okay. What about this one? Okay. Now, Calvin, I'm sure you already know this, but the vagina, uh, the vagina itself is actually the sort of the channel between, you know, the opening and the cervix. That's what the vagina is. So the first question is, what is what is the actual proper term for, for what you see, the the outer bits? Uh, wait, sorry, what's it in the middle of again? Uh, <laughs> what, what did you say? The cervix? Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Um, okay, let's, let's change the question. Calvin, name bits of a woman's reproduction system. <laughs> the womb? Yes, that's very good. That's yeah, right yeah. Inside, is yeah. it? Is, I feel like you're going to laugh at this, but I think it might be right. Is the answer to your question the vulva? Uh, the, the, the original question. Well, it is the vulva. The, that yes! is the that is the proper term for your outer bits, uh, for your outer lady parts. I thought a nice little bonus question here though would be: um, Could you could you name us some euphemisms for the vulva? Uh, well, let's have some more some more slang names <laughs> that you you might be aware of. Well, I, oh, I I thought the vulva was the vag- I thought was that that was more of a flowery way of saying vagina. I thought they were the same thing. Well, the vagina is the inside bit, basically. Yeah, but people use the term to just mean the, the yeah. outside bit, pretty yeah. much. It's, uh. it's it's one of those technicalities. So you're not, you know, you. you well, come on, Carly, I want I want some euphemisms for the fanny. Oh. Come on, what, what, well, the fanny, pussy fanny is, is one. one of them. <laughs> the what's fanny? <laughs> the octopus. <Pussy. laughs> Uh, and then there's cunt. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm myself for saying that. Uh, well, flower? one of the reasons people are trying to reclaim the word cunt is that um, I believe it's the only word we have that refers to like the entire system. It used to be like a medically appropriate word back in like medieval days, but it's uh, become crass and rude. Mm. I pulled it out during sex the other day. I, uh, she she wanted some dirty talk, and she was like, "Oh, tell me, oh. tell me how that feels." And I was like, "Oh, I, I like your cunt." And I was like, "Oh, I shouldn't have gone for that word." Did you did it. you hesitate before you said it like that, like you just did? <laughs> no, but she 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 called me up on it afterwards. She was like, "I didn't like that use of the word cunt," and I was like, "Yeah, I don't know why I went for that instead." Oh, really? Of I think I would say that. I wouldn't even think think anything yeah, of it. Yeah. When you said you pulled it out, I thought you were <laughs> <laughs> actually... Give it, you have to like, rinse it off a, after you finish, Cal. <laughs> no, is that like a prolapse or something? <laughs> what is it? Rosebud. Okay. Go on, Cal- Calvin, I want euphemisms for the fanny. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sol, help him out. Come on. Fanny. Oh, no, Whispering eye. Whispering eye. Whispering yeah, very good, eye. Yeah. A wizard sleeve. A- axe wound. Tuppence. <laughs> yeah, very good. That's a good. That's more of a childish one. Yeah, it's very good. I mean, do, do you want do you want words that refer to all of it 
Alan. Anything. Or, I don't know. I just want some funny, like piss flaps. funny euphemisms. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'll accept that. Beef curtains. Beef curtains, yeah. <laughs> Fish taco. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fur burger. <laughs> Muff. <laughs> yeah, very good. Carvin, you, you're behind on the uh, I, funny I, I words. I don't know any of these. Uh, <laughs> you I must nev- know. I, no, I don't. I, it never comes up. I never have to. There must be a load in James Bond. Uh, <laughs> Think of some Bond girl names. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> Otter's pocket. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on from that because you failed miserably at these funny words. Yeah, sorry. Around. <laughs> okay, uh, next question. <clears throat> um, now, okay, Calvin. Yes. Where is the clitoris? <laughs> oh no! Well, it's apparently, the apparently, the... this is a very hard question, Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the top of the v- opening thing, isn't it? Yeah, uh, basically. I mean, yeah, it's pretty. Oh, right. basi- yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's front, uh, front and center, basically. I don't know why it's so difficult to. No, I, right. it's, it's right there. There's a little hood over it, but it's right there. It's pretty easy to. I've actually known that for about twenty years, thanks to the South Park movie. <laughs> they don't even. They don't even say that in the South Park movie, do they? Oh, do they not? Oh, they use it as a metaphor for. Oh, I must have seen it on something. <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah, the internet. <laughs> okay, well, perhaps a more, slightly more difficult one for you then, Calvin. Where... I think we're doing pretty good at this so far. <laughs> yeah, you're doing yeah, very well. Okay. Uh, where is the G spot? <laughs> oh, <laughs> is it still up the bum, <laughs> <laughs> or is it somewhere else? <laughs> um, well, somewhere women women don't have uh, prostates, so I think that's oh. uh, an important part of that whole thing. Mm. That's why you never hear about women getting prostate cancer. Uh, yes, that's exactly right. It's, because <laughs> it's the same oh. that men don't get cervical cancer. So, <clears throat> uh, the G spot, Calvin. Any ideas? Is it in the brain? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no in sense. Um, if it if it is, then uh, we haven't accessed it yet in a in a yeah. in a civilized way. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not a psychological thing. It was a physical. But you can bit. stimulate the any. I mean, you can stimulate any part of the body mentally. I guess the so brain is the out, biggest but... erogenous zone of all. Yeah. Is it like at the bottom of the vagina then, or something like that? No. Uh, yeah. Where is it? I don't know. Sol, do you want to jump in? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I could show you on a woman. I wouldn't know which <laughs> specific part it was. It's right well, up you, in there. I, I, it's right up in there. You got, you got to reach up in, Calvin. You Calvin, can, basically, can... what you go, you go in, and then sort of up and come back on yourself. Yeah, yeah. You've got to kind of curve your fingers around. That, that's where it is. There's sort of a different texture to it. You can, yeah, you can get. There's, there's a technique to it. It's, it's, it's worth it. knowing. Hmm. Interesting. Our listeners will be loving this. Yeah, I mean, all our listeners are nineteen-year-old boys <laughs> <laughs> who watch James Bond. So they they think a good way to approach a woman is to slap her on the ass. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, okay, next question. <clears throat> what is a queef? Oh, that's <laughs> when air escapes the vagina. <laughs> Basically, very, cor- exactly very good. correct. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh, next question. How does a smear test work? Oh. Do, you- uh, <laughs> do they get some... <sighs> do they get some sort of, uh, like, lollipop stick uh, and then put it in and sort of take a good old smear <laughs> uh, and then use that? Is that how it works? I mean, That's not, my understanding of it. Not a million well. miles away, really, really, yeah. No. Take a big swab. Yeah. yeah, yeah, big swab, but that's what I wanted to, yeah. But the thing is, it, like, you, you have to, like, get the whole thing open, so you can, you've got some, oh, you okay. can get, you you can get a torch in there and stuff, yeah, 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 so you yeah, need yeah. to speculum the thing open. But then yeah, what they're actually, God. what what they're actually swabbing or taking a little sample of is the cervix, which is, like, at the back. So Cervical you to, wall. You have to be able to get right in there. And it's like oh, a rubbery kind of ring at the back, it's like this little opening hmm. to the, the cervix. So, uh, yeah, I think I'll give you that one. That's sort of basically... Oh, uh, brilliant. <laughs> um, okay, <clears throat> next question. When is an appropriate time to grab a woman by the pussy? <laughs> Never? 
<laughs> Am I right? No. You're going with never. Yes. <laughs> it can be appropriate. If, if she's like... Consenting. If, if, if you're like kissing and then she gets on top of you and she's like, I want you to grab my pussy. <laughs> That'd be an appropriate time. Well, what What is the correct answer to this? Uh, the correct answer is um, when you want to get her attention in a light-hearted way. <laughs> That's that's the correct answer. Is this was this oh uh, is this an officially sanctioned James Bond quiz then? <laughs> <laughs> okay, final question, Calvin. Why don't gays like pussy? Oh, <laughs> is this is this a, this is, is just this a genuine a, question? Is this a setup for a punchline? <laughs> yeah, I'm curious to know what your answer to this is. I just want to know. A gay person's opinion. <laughs> because. Uh, let me see. Because. I think for all the reasons we've discussed, to be honest. There's got to be a joke in there about fish. <laughs> I, well, you know me, I like fish. Well, tell. <laughs> in milk. Uh, <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> Calvin. Um, <laughs> that is disgusting. Tell us why you don't like the pussy, and then we'll, we'll sort of. We'll take you as the voice of the gays. Well, it's just everything that we've talked about. It's uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, I. I don't know. It's never something that I've wanted to look into, and I don't want to. <laughs> is it? Is it all the bits that sort of hang out? Is it just sort of flapping about? Is it that? bits hang out? <laughs> I thought well, it was there's all fewer like up bits there. that hang out than a penis. Yeah, but it's that's all about though. hanging out and flapping around. Is that what it is? It's just love cock so much you haven't got time for vagina. Exactly that. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think many straight men <laughs> love vaginas up front. I think maybe they develop a love of them, but ultimately, I think that that's developed because they're like functional. They feel nice. I don't think it's really they're not aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, are they? it's not like you. I think very few people start out looking like oh, pictures of vaginas. Yeah, I'm wanking off over that. It's like they want to look at tits and bums and. You know, now, uh, bums are nice. Bums are really nice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so and, and, you know, I know some people get into looking at vaginas off the back of that, but I think it's very much like associative for the most part. I mean, I think they're pretty gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tell you what, though, Alan. Yeah. I've come round on the taste with age. <laughs> I've acquired that taste. It's like Guinness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Calvin, what do you think they taste like? I have no idea. I don't even want to know. Venture, venture a guess. Come on. <laughs> well, I would guess something fishy. <laughs> I don't think that's yeah too much of a stretch. Have uh, you ever have you ever sucked on a penny? I was gonna say it's kind of like licking a battery, <laughs> like copper. A little it bit. Depends. Yeah, depends on the. Time I mean, it varies from person to person, but oh, that's it's, weird. There's almost like a metallic zing to it. it yeah. Oh my god. Uh, well, uh, what was my score? I think you've passed the test. I think you've passed the vagina I think you've test. Done well. I think you've done very well. Thank uh, you. For someone who, I'm someone who has not seen one for twenty-seven years, I don't think I'd do as well on a, on a test about cocks. So, uh... <laughs> well, tune in next time. For that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, we can sort that out. Uh, Calvin, do you ever do you ever think about how like the biggest impact you'll ever have on a fanny is your mother? That's true of most men, though. Yeah. Well, well, obviously you're not doing it right, so. <laughs> <laughs> right, shall we come back to the film? I think we've well, gone <laughs> way off track. I, my, my next note is, <clears throat> Bond drives a car down a train track. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, when we get to uh, Germany and Bond is, yeah, posing as a circus worker... And yeah, he drives it on a train. Track I know it's in that in that scene. It's, I think it's just before he gets into the car and all that. He he's shooting people. He he shoots a guy in the forehead. Yeah, mm. and you actually see like the bullet wound. I know. On his head. I, 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 like, I had that, that exact thought. Struck me as being like just because st- there's other times in this film where he shoots someone and they fall down the stairs or whatever. But it just seemed very visceral for a. a yeah. Well, film. my my thought at the time was, huh. Imagine what this film would be like if that had like a proper blood pack on it, and it was just like a big <laughs> just splat of blood when that out the back of his head. Yeah. It's funny how not blood. having that just makes it all right. It is an odd shot, isn't it? Because mm. we never sort of focus on the faces of those people. Uh, yeah, it's just like, killing, like but... Bond just killed a man. Oh, that's nice. 
I guess it's a Soviet baddie. He's not the bad guy, though. He's just a soldier, isn't he? He's just doing Yeah, his but job. he's working for him. Um, yeah, but he doesn't know what they're up to secret plots. He thinks he's protecting his nation. Oh. Mm. Yeah, but that nation's Russia, isn't it, Alan? So oh, that's, that's the point. It is yeah. Soviet In the Union, 80s. So that's okay. it's from the 80s. Well, yeah. yeah. Specifically, it's because he's working for Orlov, who isn't... He's sort of gone rogue at this point, and you know, General Gogol. That was another and, uh, element of the plot that I never quite got. And then it was sort of like all of a sudden, Burkhoff was on a train track all dying, of, and he all was of the a bad sudden. guy. I was like, oh, I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like the bit where he says, "Follow that car," when Bond's going on the <laughs> train tracks. So that's good, and a great fight on top of the train as well. That's really cool. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, tra- of bits. Tra- uh, train roof action. Yeah, lots of that. I did notice, actually, when he gets on the car, the car rims go onto the train tracks and all that. And that's yeah. very typical Bond, like, obviously not very realistic, but it's like, okay, I can buy into that. But then there's a shot where the, the, the car gets knocked off the tra- rails by another train and it goes flying into the mm-hmm. a river, yeah? Do yeah. You, have you know, ever noticed that the car flies into the river and it like lands on a boat and there's these two men fishing and they jump out of the way? Yeah. And, but... One of them doesn't get out of the way in time. And I don't think it's del- it's obviously a mistake because they both go to jump out. Obviously, when you jump out of a boat, it rocks. So one of them jumps out and it makes the boat rock and the other guy kind of loses his balance. So he, instead of jumping out, he sort of half falls. And then a car like <laughs> lands on the boat and he, and it's it's definitely far too close to him than it should have been. Oh. Uh, you just go back and watch that scene because the guy does not, that. it doesn't look safe to me anyway. I don't think it was deliberate, put it that way. Oh, interesting. I never picked up on that. Uh, one of the stuntmen was severely injured, uh, who was, I think he was doubling for Roger Moore on the side of the train, um, when there's that whole fight scene. I think he was, like, hanging off the side or something, and someone hadn't done their job properly, and he got, like, hit by a sign which was very close to the train and had, like, a load of his skin ripped off or something like that. Uh, yeah, but Cubby Broccoli paid his medical bills. Hey! Do look after your own. Yep, yep, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I've just looked at IMDb's trivia for this. It doesn't really shed much light on it. It just says, In the train flying car stunt, when the car landed, one of the stuntmen dressed as a fisherman only just made it out of the rowboat in the lake where the car was landing. This footage can be seen in the finished movie. Ah. So well, that's yeah, basically yeah, that's what Alan just, just said. But. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously written by someone who's watched the film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and doesn't know any further information. But yeah, it is definitely um, not... A, a clean exit as it was supposed to yeah, be. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, oh, okay. So now this is the point where he's running around and he's trying to hitchhike and the kids are fucking with him and, and all this. Yeah. But I just thought, all oh, this bit, there's a load of like comedy bits where like he can't get his... But it, the stakes are too high. He's like going to try and stop a bomb that's going to kill thousands of people. And he's like, he's, he's already shot people in the head, but he's not prepared to push in front of a woman at the phone booth. <laughs> like just drag her out and say fuck off and and get the phone. Like you're bigger than her. Or well, he takes her, her car her. in the end. Which exactly, is... yeah. Which is at least that's something. But then he and then he's in the car with some fat Germans with sausages, and it's like a comedy bit. It's like this. This is not the appropriate comedy moments. These are the. This should be earlier. I think I agree with you, except for how Roger Moore is playing it. Like, I yeah. think he plays it quite seriously, and there's a load of this stuff going on around him. But he's not sort of like, you know, smirking and raising an eyebrow. He's very yeah, he's focused on what he's trying to do. I think I think he acts really well in this film. And I think, like, especially, like, getting dressed up as a clown, for that <laughs> not to be completely ridiculous is pretty good, I think, on his part. Yeah. I mean, I did I did uh, sort of try and work it out. It, it took him approximately 40 seconds uh, to <laughs> put on full clown costume and makeup. He just has it on underneath, Alan. <laughs> oh, he actually whipped his face mask off. <laughs> He's a secret agent. He dresses in layers. He's just got like yeah, disguises all the way down. Yeah. Mm. yeah, but the whole the whole end sequence it was quite good actually. He was trying to get the bomb, and I like that he didn't just sort of come up and then he has to like just basically panic, run to the American general, and go, "Look, there's a bomb in there." So, no, I'm really Help! serious. There there's is a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what to do. <laughs> And all I'm that's way over my head. They can't, they, he can't I've been coasting for years. <laughs> and it's all been bullshit. I don't know hey, what I'm doing. He disarms it. He's the one who everyone's like, oh, let him go. I could have disarmed that bomb. All he had to do was open the, take the thing out quickly. Yeah. Before the twists come out. Twist and pull. I like how the circus just continues on. 
afterwards and it's like oh do people just yeah, think people it's pay part of the show or... people <laughs> pay the money they want to see a show oh <laughs> it's uh, back to india for the climax q gets in on the action for some reason and is piloting a hot air balloon uh, yeah well well this is it they they you know, diffusing the bomb is usually the climax of a film, but they they have too yeah. many loose ends to wrap up. So then we have to go off with oh look, it's a it's a mansion with high walls. We need a series of silly ways of getting up. <laughs> Don't worry, I brought the elephants over from the circus. <laughs> Was that octopusy circus then? Yeah, yeah. See, I, I didn't quite figure that out, and then at the end, it's like they're all doing their tricks and they've got the elephants there it's like oh right it's all part of the same thing yeah I didn't really she wants to get revenge on Kamal Khan for betraying her yeah which I I didn't follow any of that either I didn't really know what was going on with that Uh, but then yeah for some reason Lady Bond and Q turn up in a hot air balloon which (laughs) is not the most manoeuvrable of items (laughs) transport items yeah well Q's not Q's like having a break at that point, isn't he? He's just having a bit of fun. It's like Friday afternoon. He's just <laughs> he's checked Friday. out. He's had a couple of drinks. <laughs> he's been that working would, really hard all week coming up. That with would be good. If rope and stuff. Bond like gives Q a call and he's just like half cut. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> you need my help? Oh Christ! <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a trip for Q to make to say that. He, oh no, he was in India actually, I guess. Maybe he just like, yeah, had the mm-hmm. hot air balloon ready to go. Uh, yeah. yeah. A, a Union it, flag hot air balloon, just in case uh, there was any <laughs> doubt. The, it just the going seems the like, especially for a surprise attack, it's uh, not the most inconspicuous of vehicles. That's why they do it though. Because any, any villains who see it are going to go. Oh, look at that Union Jack hot air balloon. <laughs> well, that that couldn't possibly be uh, a secret agent. It's too obvious. Some tourist oh, yeah, just some stupid tourist prick. Yeah, leave it be, leave it be. And then, oh no, he's right behind us. Yeah, they, he manages to sneak up on a guy close enough to whack him on the back of the head, you know. Presumably, uh, there's, chop! Like, there's a noise behind him going... <laughs> well, like, Q gets the girls uh, for the first time in the series, because then they're, like, taking him out of the hot air balloon, and there's a very awkward moment where he gets a line. What, where they, uh, they have to get this 75-year-old man out of a wicker basket without him falling over. Yeah, and then one, I think what, the, one of them, like, kisses him on the cheek, and then he's like, no, wait, there's no time for that. Later, perhaps. And then he's <laughs> yeah, sort yeah, good of, old like... Q. He's, yeah, he's not so funny when he gets down to it. Oh, I like that way, yeah. yeah. Later, perhaps, yeah. Yeah, he could have made a joke about rising to the occasion or something. Or balloon? Has anyone else got a? Has anyone got a smaller balloon I can borrow? <laughs> to put on my penis, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Bond is uh, trying to rescue Octopussy, and I love all this stuff at the end with the guys on the plane. This whole plane finale, it did. I mean, it felt a bit rushed, and it's already like the third ending we've had. So I think they were just trying to get through it. But the whole thing just felt a bit sort of like not built up enough. I don't know. Like if this is going to be a big climax, then do it. I don't. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And was was Bond's plan basically? Well, I'll just rip enough bits of the plane off until they have to land. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> this is pretty much the plan, wasn't it? Yeah, I love all the stuff with Camel Khan and his henchmen here, where they're like laughing together and then double taking out the window when they see him. And then I like the bit where he's like, "Go out." And get him. He's like, out there? Go. <laughs> I like all that. Because the, the henchmen are so usually just like, oh yeah, whatever their guy says, they're going to like go and do it. And this guy's like, what? No. Do you want to know what my favourite part of the whole film is? Uh, is it the bit where he's on the boat and the people are going in, out, in, out, <laughs> and he's about to set the Is that it? No, no. <laughs> oh, okay. I do like being cheered on when I'm when I'm doing it, though, I can relate to that. I forget what I'm doing otherwise. <laughs> Unless I've got explicit instructions. It was that bit when the guy's hitting them with tennis rackets in the car, and then one of them gets a load of money, and they oh. th- and he throws... The- James Bond, I think it is, throws money at the bad guy, and it lands in a beggar's like, <laughs> cup, and he sort of goes... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute. What about the bit where they're breaking into the castle thing 
And, you know, an acrobat woman jumps onto someone's shoulders and off the top of the wall. The guard sees her, looks at her, looks at the bottle in his hand and goes... (laughs) Fourth film in a row we've had a guy looking at the bottle, but it's not the same guy who was in the previous three. It's a different man now. Yeah, Yeah, he needs someone a bit more suave. At this point in the Roger Moore tenure, obviously he's only on his sixth film now. He's only got one more to go. I mean, you guys haven't been very critical of him really at all throughout this entire uh, series. I'm quite surprised. I get the sense that you both kind of are happy enough to go along with him as Bond. Roger Moore? Yeah, Uh, I quite liked him in this film as Bond. Yeah, I... I I probably liked him here more than previously. I think... I mean, honestly, this might be my favourite portrayal of Bond in one of these films to date, this particular one. It feels like it's kind of clicked into gear at this point. Hmm. He's not a prick like Sean Connery. Yeah, he's, he's. I mean, he's, he's a prick, too, but he's not. He's not, not too lechy like he has been in some of the earlier ones. He's. They 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 seem to be trying to do their best in terms of giving him girls who don't look twenty. You know, like they look a bit older. Mm. Uh, they're not. They don't seem to focus too much on all the shagging. They just sort of get on with it a bit apologetically. I think that's the right thing to do. Hmm. Hmm. Cool. So, before before we rate. Remember I said I was going to average out our Bond ratings and work it out? Oh, you've been doing that, have you? I've done it, I've done it. Remember I said you shouldn't bother, because I wasn't interested. Yeah, but I said, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Do you want to take a stab at what your average Bond rating for all the Bond films so far is, Calvin? I would guess mine would be quite high. It's going to be an 8 or a 9. I'm going to go with 8. Uh yeah, eight is pretty much accurate. You you've got yeah. seven point six 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 oh, six okay. six recurring. So mm-hmm. round that up, it's an eight. Yeah. So yeah, well done. All right. Now now, who do you reckon mm-hmm. is second highest? Soul. I reckon my average is going to be somewhere around f- 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 high fours, low fives. Uh, five five point one. Calvin. Yeah, I think Alan's probably going to be on about five. I think you're going to be slightly higher, uh, because I, I always get the sense that Alan likes the films more from the actual discussion part, and then when we get to the ratings, he gives it like 4 out of 10 or something. Uh, I, I think you're going to be... Don't give away what we're about to do. <laughs> I think, Sol, you're going to be a higher 5, maybe four, 5.5 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, you got, you're spot on. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm higher than Alan. I've got an average of... Five point four one six 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 recurring, uh. and Alan, you were pretty much spot on exactly. You've got a high four, like you said, four point mm. eight three 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 oh, recurring. A bit lower than I thought. Mm. Very very harsh, but uh, <laughs> perhaps fair. <laughs> yes. But are we going to bump those ratings up now or down? Ah. Well, Alan, uh, well, shall I go first? I, I give it a very generous, I think, six out of ten. I knew you wouldn't like this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's him liking it. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of know where you're coming from. I just felt not quite as positive. I give it a five. Hmm. Good That's not bad five. for you, yeah. Calvin, is, is, how does this rank for you? Oh, this is one of my very... Uh, I, I often go to this one on like a lazy Sunday afternoon, just have it on... You know, we don't need to pay it all attention. It's just nice, comforting noise. Don't you do that uh, with all of them? No, well, this one and Tomorrow Never Dies, which is a Pierce Brosnan one of my sort of go-to ones for that. I'm going to go with eight. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. So, what's, oh, what's the next go. one? What's the next one? The next one is A View to a Kill, which I cannot Ooh. wait to talk about because that's the one with Christopher Walken in it Ooh. and Grace Jones and a very, like, I think we all agree Roger Moore looks a bit long in the tooth, but he's sort of all right here. He has a facelift. Oh. The next one is his last one. He had some sort of a facelift or some cosmetic surgery, something that makes him look very old in the next one. And he's <laughs> that's not, like that's not what he was going for when he had the face of <laughs> I think that uh the next one, like he he said that it was like his last one. He knew it was his last one when he realized that he was older than like his co star's mother 
Like <laughs> the Bond girls are all like re- like three like you know a third his age at this point, <laughs> and he looks very uncomfortable in those scenes. But uh, yeah, anyway, we'll talk more about that. Not it, not too long a time actually. I don't want to get to to f- and spoil the fun, but is this the Grace Jones one? Yes. Thank you for listening, and if you enjoy the show, then please help us grow by recommending it to your friends. Positive word of mouth is the best way to help us reach a bigger audience, so please do help spread the love. And if you're a Bond fan specifically, then you should already know who Calvin is. He's a very popular and excellent Bond reviewer on YouTube. You can find him by searching Calvin Dyson Bond Reviewer. And just the other day, in fact, Calvin and myself went on a VIP trip to the Casino Royale Secret Cinema Experience, and uh, we both recorded some things for it, so he will be putting up a YouTube video all about that. Um, We'll be cutting together some audio for a Diminisode, which you can only get if you support us at patreon.com forward slash dimreturns. Just one dollar a month and you get all the extras. But that is something that will be coming up very soon if you are a Bond fan specifically. So, there you go. I will see you next week.